Hello, and welcome to Bear Beat, a conversation series with friends of the Baylor University MBA program. In each episode, we'll talk with faculty, students, alumni, and more, discussing everything you wanted to know about earning an MBA. I'm Stacy McCracken, Director of Baylor's Executive MBA program in Austin. Welcome to Bear Beat. Today, my guest is Jason McGregor. Jason is an Associate Professor of Accounting at Baylor, and he's been teaching in the Executive MBA program in Austin for about five years. Jason, welcome. So one of the first questions we ask prospective students is, what are the classes that you are most concerned about as you enter the program? And inevitably, they answer accounting. So you've done a bunch of interviews with us. You've heard this yourself. What do you tell students when they talk about their concerns about accounting? How do you approach it? What, what, how is your class different? A lot of times when we think about accountants, we're thinking about a Christmas carol, Bob Marley counting money, and we're really thinking about bookkeepers, people who are doing the mundane, who are just entering data and not thinking. And so we approach in the EMBA, we're thinking about the people who use data to make decisions, and in particular, financial data. And so you're not going to be a CPA when you're finished, but you'll be able to have a conversation with the CPA. So how long have you been with Baylor? I arrived in 2007. So I guess it's thir- I'm in my 13th year. Uh, COVID's really messed up my timing of understanding. <laughs> what is your favorite part of teaching executive MBA students? Unexpected conversations. And almost every class this happens where I have a script, I have a plan where we're gonna approach how the world looks, how it feels. And as students add their unique perspectives, we tack, we see problems from a much richer perspective than any textbook could ever offer. It's, if you just wanted to read books and get uh, the knowledge, you could do that in a lot of different ways, a lot of, of faster ways. But it's these conversations where you see an IRS agent uh, talking to someone who's in construction, talking to someone who owns the pawn shop, and we're all figuring out how value is created in an organization. I always leave with like notes on, I'm learning more about the world every time I interact because there is no one answer. And that's what the executive MBA brings is that diversity of backgrounds all informing and helping each other. So as you think about leaders today and you think about all of the things you're trying to bring into the classroom and teach our students, what do you think are some of the most important characteristics that make a successful leader? Successful leaders, listening. Uh, it, it, and I guess humility links to it, to hearing the things you don't want. Um, I love having people who disagree with me close to me and influence me. Um, too often, I, people surround themselves with people who agree with them. I love the person who disagrees. And so it seems every day I'm on a Zoom call and we're doing, I'm on committees and we discuss, if everyone agrees too quickly, we're leaving a lot of opportunities on the table. Okay, so how do you generate ideas? Oh, I wish there was a magic formula where you could say, I settled down with a great book. It's usually just conversations, talking to people. Relationships really are the key to for everything for me and how I come up with ideas, just those Zoom calls where you're just talking to someone and saying things, reading the newspaper. Um, John Oliver, I've had a lot of ideas, just seeing his different perspective on things. Um, I love reading contradictory things. We were talking in class a couple weeks ago how data is processed online and it tends to reinforce your current beliefs. So if you always check one news source, you tend to get more and more consistent feeds that support that view. But I check every news source I possibly can. So I've got BBC, I got CBC. And so they never know what to send me. And then my um, 13 year old also will log, jump onto our computer and use it. And so I get Minecraft suggestions and all these assorted things. And so that multitude of different perspectives always forces you to think outside of one narrow view. And so that's really how I get ideas. It's just listening to people who I never thought I'd listen to. There is such wisdom in that. That is amazing. I totally agree. I think surrounding yourself with people who are going to stretch you and get you out of your comfort zone um, is so important. 
So let's switch gears for just a second. What is one book that you think everyone should read? That probably shaped my, um, me the most was it's called The Fifth Business. It's by Robert Davies. And so I'm sure very few of your listeners have heard of Robert Davies. He was a Canadian author in the 80s, um, won every global literary uh, prize. And in this book, it's what do you do in life if we think most operas are structured around the notion of the two uh, male and female good, uh, male and female bad, but then you always have this fifth person in life. And so many of us want to view ourselves as the heroes, but what about if the story is just actually about you as the fifth person, that, that person who just is used to advance the plot of other characters. And so it's a role I've actually, I like to embrace. I like being the leader, but I also realize a lot of the times being an advocate and helping other people achieve their goals is a big part of who I am. And so, and even in the EMBA, I'm not going to be the hero of any of our student stories. I'm not going to be the one they look at in 20 years and say, everything is because of this person. But if I can help advance their story, give them a few more tools, uh, that's a win for me. That's perfect. All right. It's time to have a little bit of fun. So hopefully you'll play along and you'll think these questions are fun too. All right. Mountains or beach? Mountains. Early, late, or right on time? Early. Pet peeve? Late. <laughs> All right. What's for dessert? Oh, cannolis. But a cannoli in Florence is the best cannoli. Okay, perfect, perfect. Awesome. Any final comments, any final thoughts that you'd like to share? It's a daring choice to do an EMBA. And so it always impresses me when someone says, I'm willing to make an economic investment. I'm willing to make a time investment and be consistent with who you are on day one. So before you started the program, everyone made a decision that this was incredibly valuable. And don't give into the temptation to ever say good enough. Good enough will never be good enough for what you're sacrificing. What you, you're buying, not a degree, but a learning opportunity. And don't waste a second of it. Uh, Jason, that is excellent advice. Thank you so much. I will be right back with you. This has been Bear Beat. That was Jason McGregor, the Associate Professor of Accounting at Baylor University. For more inspiring conversations about the Baylor MBA program, head over to Baylor's Business School YouTube channel and don't forget to share and like this story. Thank you for joining us.